ladies and gentlemen, presenting the nerdiest competition ever created by the language of bromance team in this corner, obsessed with Star Wars and anything with swords, Richard! And in this corner, obsessed with the Ninja Turtles, and scared of anything from the ocean, Sheehan! Brought to you as a Pod Bros exclusive. In association with the L.O.B. Army. Tonight's competition is a language of romance What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And standing behind the door, Richard, is me, and I'm Sean. <laughs> and, uh, well, I was speaking the language of bromance until my best friend murdered me. Oh, Richard, we are coming at the end of the the scary October season. This actually comes oh. out the first week in November. We, Sad we, face. All yeah. sad. All Saints weekend, right? Is that what the weekend after uh, Halloween is? I know. The day oh. after Halloween is All Saints Day. I don't know what the weekend after is. But typically this month, what we like to do, we do Broloween. We just had that. And we like to do a draft that kind of focuses around something creepy and scary. So, Richard, for the 43rd time ever, we're going to do the Slasher Draft. And if you don't know, and you should, what our drafts are is there's seven round NFL style drafts where we flip flop picks back and forth. Whoever has the first pick in the first round gets the first pick in the second round. And back in the day, we flipped the paint to see who gets to go first. And I won. So, in odd drafts, I get the first pick. Even drafts, Richard gets the first pick. And this is an odd draft, Richard. So, I get the honors of picking the first slasher in our slasher draft. And what this is, everybody. These are slasher films. These are the characters in the slasher films, the main characters, the people that made you scared at night, that you, know, you flip the curtain back in the shower, checking to see if there's somebody there about ready to cut your throat or somebody hiding in the bushes. Or is what the, else is the slasher the main character in the slasher movie or is it the unwitting you know, person that gets duped in and then, is, and then invariably stops the slasher? That's a good question. I don't know. I guess it's the one that kind of branches all the the sequels. It's the the it's the it's the main bad, I guess, in the episode in the in the um, movies. Okay. Okay. I was just I was just I was always confused at that because they have you know because like you know like I never see like a slasher movie where it's like starring blah blah starring Robert England as Frey Krueger. That's true. You know, yeah. Although you get like the the stuff at the when they like pass on afterwards or they they move on to bigger and better things it's like kevin bacon was in sleep away sex camp 27 that wasn't that wasn't a slasher movie sean that was porn well yeah how do you think he got the last name bacon oh why i'll tell you later all right. <laughs> All right, Richard. So I'm going to kick this draft off. And I kind of like figured this. This is like my Mount Rushmore. Like I'm building an all star team of slashers that are going to walk the red carpet. They're going to sign autographs. And people are like, oh my God, I want you to kill me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> people are cheering in crowds. Oh my God. And they're ripping their clothes off. So for my first round pick, this is the guy that would love for those chicks to like show them their boobies. He'd be like, God, you're the, you're the, you're the evilness of my dreams. And he's like, I am the evilness of your dreams. Richard, for my first round pick, I want to go with probably the first slasher that gave me nightmares that didn't make, that made me not want to go to sleep, Richard. Uh-huh. My first round pick, I'm going to go with the great Nightmare on Elm Street character, Freddy Krueger. Played by Robert England. Played by Robert England. Could still be played by Robert England. Was recently re, uh, replayed by Robert England in the TV show. Um, what's the one that takes place in like the 80s? That's new. Uh, 
the hell is that show? Kevin Smith directed a few, uh, or has directed like one episode of it. Oh, I don't. Hmm. The, uh, the Gimbergs, the Bloombergs, Goldbergs, the, the Goldbergs. Goldbergs. Yes, he uh, he reprised his role in that for that October Halloween. I episode. totally didn't know that. <clears throat> yep, I haven't seen. It. I saw him do the previews, and it was super creepy. But this is you know when you think of slashers, like this is one of the the main archetypes of that. It's it's you know the character that can't die, or at least he comes back every time. He's got multiple films, lots of kills, lots of different kills. Kind of does the whole arc of like first movie he's super super scary and kind of goes like where it gets more hokey and hokey and then all of a sudden he comes back in a new nightmare by Wes Craven oh this is direct this was created by Wes Craven too it was you know the the probably the the godfather of slasher and scary movies it wasn't it wasn't his it wasn't the first movie everybody always like thinks like this was like his first his his first like big movie which always bothered me I don't know why but it always bothered me was it his first successful film, though? I know he did uh, Last House on the Left was his first, and Last Hills House Have Eyes was his second. Yeah. But neither one of those were commercial successes, were they? Were they? I'm, well, I don't know. I mean, could you really call... Was Nightmare on Elm Street... I'm, yeah, I'm sure they were all... I'm sure they all made money. No, I mean, made, like Nightmare on Elm Street was like a thing. Like, it was, wasn't was in like a ton of theaters. It might have been. But I don't know if those other two were. I don't know. Like, it's... <sighs> It's hard when you're talking about like the success of a horror film because yeah, I feel like true. I feel like you're talking about a a different a different bar when you're talking about a horror movie like uh you know like Nightmare on Elm Street didn't make Titanic money but it w- I feel like Nightmare on Elm Street was successful in its genre but I but how, I don't know how successful it was Let me ask you this Richard 20 years from now, so Titanic's been out for about 20 years, I think. So this is going to be 40 years. Yeah. What's What are people going to know more, Titanic, the characters, or Freddy Krueger? I think people are still going to debate over whether or not Leo could fit on that door. Yeah, maybe. But I think people are still going to be scared to go to sleep. Is that is that it? Is that you're just, I mean, you're, just, you're scared to go to sleep? There, like, there's oh, that. Like, I mean, there's the claw hand. I mean, as as a kid, like, you know... I don't know how many people ran into this when they were kids, but like you'd, you'd be sitting there and my parents would be flipping through channels and be like, oh, this will scare the shit out of the kids. Let's watch this. Yeah, yeah. And then they wonder why I slept in their bed every night. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it, you can't run away from your dreams. Like you, you have to sleep at some point. That's and true. You have, and not only is it like you're running away from something, but it's some, it's a thing that controls your dreams. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's essentially the boogeyman. Yes. Yeah. And it's, he can kill you at any point too. Like he's, he literally just plays with you like a cat plays with a mouse. And he's like, okay, I'm done. I fed off your fear enough. Stab right through the heart. Or if you're Johnny Depp, you get pulled into the, oh shit. And when I was a kid, I had a waterbed. And when I saw that thing with Johnny Depp, I was like, fuck that. Let all the water out of this bed. <laughs> and then I soaked my living room floor. <laughs> but whenever I think slasher films, like I think if you're making an, uh, a monument, you know, Mount Rushmore, Freddy Krueger is one of those guys that's going to be up front and center with his fedora and his sweater outfit and his claws. You know? I will, I will agree the the, 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 the claw, the claw hand is very iconic. Exactly, and that's what that's what is a great slasher character. Is the iconic things he's got the scars, he's got the fedora, he's got the sweater and the claws, and he, you know his thing is your dreams. So, uh, for my first round pick, Richard, I'm going to go with the I think one of my favorite ever, Freddy Krueger. All right, okay. One, so two, Freddy's coming for you. See, we got a song, Richard. It does have a song. Mm-hmm. I did. I oh, I did like the song. I used to sing the song to my sisters while they were <laughs> when they when they were getting ready to go to sleep because I was a horrible person. <laughs> um, I'm trying to let's see. Okay, for my first round, for my first pick, you were you were just talking about about Mount Rushmore, like the uh, you know the uh, the the faces of Mount Rushmore when it comes to what what horror, you know, icons are this, this one's mine. And I've said it, I've said it before. So I don't think it's any surprise. Sean first pick Michael Myers. Okay. Because here let's talk. Okay. Frey Krueger, you're saying don't fall asleep, but the movie's called nightmare on Elm street. 
So the way I understand it, don't fall asleep on Elm Street. Typically, they've expanded on that, that it can happen in more places, though. Which which is funny, because when I was a kid, and the first time I saw that movie, I lived on an, I lived uh, on a, I lived on Elm Street, on an Elm Street. Did you guys, did you tell your parents you need to move right now? I did. I think they did, they built that way so, like, parents could tell kids, like, listen, that only, that's only going to happen to the people that live on Elm Street. And you're, like, at that point, you're like, I live on Elm Street. It's like, well, better say your prayers and hold your crucifix. Yep. And then they just get, and then I snuck into the medicine cabinet, took a bunch of no dos. <laughs> As your mom and dad are laying there singing, one, two, three. Mom, you're good. Dad, you guys are mean. I, have, uh, you, I, I got to sleep in the hospital. Only downside is I had to get my stomach pumped. Oh, okay. But anyway, so, so with, with Frey Krueger, it's don't fall asleep on Elm Street, right? Here's the thing with, with, with Michael Myers, okay? He's everywhere. I feel like he is he is literally everywhere. I mean, he's everywhere in that town in Illinois. So, but you live in Illinois, I guess, so. Oh god. <laughs> See? But I'm I'm saying like, you know, it's like, oh, with Freddy Krueger, don't fall asleep on Elm Street. With Michael Myers, I feel like he's everywhere. I feel like he just pops out of fucking everywhere. Like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, get my lady friend and we're going to go have a party in the hot tub. Nope, because Michael Myers jumped out of the hot tub and stabbed me in the face. Yeah, like, what were you doing there? He's like, I was watching. Like, you sick, <laughs> sicky. Like, oh, I think I'm going to, you know, go do my laundry. Nope, can't do that, because Michael Myers jumps out of the washing machine yep. and stabs me in the heart. Yeah, and he's got that knife. You're like, that's going to rust. Yeah. He's like, that's I, not practical. I coded it. Stab, stab, stab. You're like, well. Guess you're gonna die and get tetanus. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> no, no, ow, 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 ow. See, and like, so I. That's what always scared me the most about about Halloween is the fact that I felt like that killer was everywhere and had the chance to just show up everywhere. Yeah. Um. The other ones I could always kind of rationalize or just, you know, come up with some like fucking weird ass fucking rule. Be like, well, that doesn't really apply to me because, you know, but like I felt like there weren't any rules for this dude because he was just a crazy ass dude that wore a William Shatner mask and stabbed me in the face. Yeah. Jumped out of my closet and stabbed me in the face. If you didn't live in Illinois, do you think you could rationalize and be like, well, I mean, he only attacks people in Illinois? Because I think that's all it ever took place in. Um, I mean, actually, I guess in H2O and stuff like that, he kind of went after his sister in other places. But for the most part, it seems like it took place in Illinois. So don't be blood related. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Unless you see the new one that just came out, which I haven't seen yet, but I think they kind of take a different tweak on that. Because that's supposed to be like Halloween 2. Like, they're ignoring Halloween 2 on. It's just Halloween, John Copper's Halloween, and then it's this new Halloween that's coming out. I'll tell you what, like, I, and, and, uh, when it comes, when it comes to Halloween, when it comes to horror films and sequels in general, I felt like Halloween 2 is probably the best sequel to a horror film because there is no, there is no time lost between one and two. Yeah. Like, like essentially you could watch it's I, I kind of think of Halloween one and two as one movie, kind of like the Godfather. Like you got to watch one and two together. Yeah, I could see that as one movie with Halloween. I feel like you have to watch one and two together as one as one movie mm. because so there is, like I said, there is no like Halloween ends and then Halloween two picks up. Like Halloween two starts roughly twenty seconds before Halloween ends. Like there is nothing, you know, you you're picking up right where you left off. So how do you feel with the approach they're taking with the new Halloween that just came out where it's they're kind of ignoring Halloween two and this is just Halloween happened? Because in Halloween they don't mention that Lori Strode is Jason's sister. That's in the Halloween two. Right. And so they're kind of taking that idea is that Halloween, the new one that just came out, is just this girl that he's obsessed with. It's not his blood relation. Yeah. Are well, you okay and also, with that? Or? I did. Honestly, the whole like mythology of it, I, I was never really that concerned with because 
I felt like the I felt like the mythology of it was just kind of a uh, kind of an excuse to keep making more movies. Yeah, which most and, of them and are. A, and it was kind of a way to loosely tie them together as one series. I mean, it always just felt kind of forced to me. But I did like the fact that I haven't like said I haven't seen the re the the current reboot either but you okay so let's so halloween this first halloween this halloween they've had halloween it's now had this is now in its second reboot because we've had halloween then we had i think it went i think the original series went to like five five or six something like that yeah something like that and then rob zombie picked it up and made two which his Halloween is really good. I love his I Halloween. I did too. I liked it too. Halloween 2, I think that was kind of like the studio saying, hey, you have to do this, which the thing I think they fucked up at Halloween 2 with Zombie, in the very end, I think you should have realized that Michael Myers had actually died in the first one, and his sister, Lori Strode, was ta- was doing all these killings. Oh. I thought that would have been, because she ends up in the insane asylum, like she sees her, her mom on a white horse and it looks fucked up. But like, I was yeah. like, if you showed like her coming out wearing the mask as she's been doing all these killings, be like, oh my God, this family's all fucked up and she's fucked up. That's what happened. Yeah. They'd be like, he's a, the killer's not really the killer. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. Blow some minds. Yeah. Okay. So this is now a remake of a remake. This is now it's in its second reboot. This is like the this is the Spider Man Homecoming is of this, Halloween movies. Yeah, but is this the first sequel reboot that you know of? Because it's not a reboot of the original Halloween movie that exists in this canon. It's a reboot of the sequel. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't know if it's the only one. But obviously, there's something to this character. Oh yeah. That I'm, we've now had. This is now movie number eight. I mean, yeah, this was definitely on, like, if I'm thinking Mount Rushmore, like the top four things, Michael Myers is on there. With his William Shatner mask. Yep, I didn't his. learn until way later in life that that was a William Shatner mask. I just thought it was some creepy ass white mask that he just, you know, was like, oh, here, just wear this. Let's make up, let's make this. And then you put it on and then you'll be creepy as all fucking get out. That's like one of the highest grossing independent films of all time too, isn't it? Is it? I have no I idea. So. But and then it wasn't until way later in life that I learned it was uh, a William. It was that William Shatner. It was a Captain Kirk Halloween mask that they just took and spray painted white. Yeah, you're like that can't be uh, appropriate. I think Shatner was pissed. Like if you were William Shatner, uh, I like, mean, why do they think I murdered all these people? <laughs> if if he gets royalties for every one of those Michael Myers masks that gets sold, I bet he doesn't care. Yeah, that's a good point. Money makes you kind of forget a lot of things, Richard. I wouldn't know. <laughs> okay. So question, if if you go if you if I go to a Halloween store and I buy a Michael Myers mask, is that Michael Myers mask a William Shatner mask? I would hope so, especially because like the story's known. If not, William Shatner needs to sue somebody. <laughs> He's like, "Listen here, motherfuckers." Yeah, that's a Michael Myers mask, but it's a William Shatner mask. <laughs> the box says Mike Myers, but the face says Shatner. <laughs> and Shatner wants to get paid. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, and he was so low tech. That was the other oh, thing yeah. that was, you know, that I always liked. He was like super low tech. He always well, just, it was just stabby, stabby with a knife. Yeah. When, like you said, he always just appeared. On, it was, it's, just, it's a quintessential, like you're running through the woods and you look back and he's like a hundred yards away and you turn a corner and he's right there. You're like, how mm-hmm. the fuck is that possible? And he never ran. Yeah. Got that slow walk. Always had the slow walk. Which Ugh. did Freddy run? I think Freddy did run in some instance. He had I'm, to I think he did. You're making me remember parts of my childhood. I'm, I tried to forget. Yeah, there was some scary nights sitting up like I, my parents were like, you guys need to go to bed. I'm like, thank you. Like, you didn't have to sit up and watch this. We weren't forcing you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> One, two. <no! laughs> so, yeah, Sean, there's my first pick. The the other face, one of the other faces of Mount Rushmore of slasher, killer, crazy people, Michael Myers. Michael 
Mike J. Myers. <laughs> Mike, Michael J. Myers? <laughs> well, Richard, my second round pick, I feel like this, again, is another iconic on that Mount Rushmore. Uh, it's a character that lives in a camp, has mother issues, and honestly, it scared the crap out of me to go camping. Uh, kind of the same thing. You got the iconic mask. You got the iconic weapon. You've got the iconic films, the legend. Richard, I'm going to go with one Jason from Friday the 13th. What was his What was his quintessential weapon? Was it the machete or was it, it an axe? It became the machete later. So I felt like it was the machete. I kind of enjoy this character because it kind of grew. Like, you know, um, ignoring the first one. Second one, he had, I think, like a, a sack over his head. Uh, yeah, was, why, why, we have to ignore the first one because... He wasn't the killer in the first one. He wasn't even really technically in the first one. I mean, yeah. you could say the kid out of the lake was him, but not truthfully. Um, but, I mean, he, he evolved from, you know, being just a kid in the, a story, essentially, in the first yeah. one. Then he's this thing with a mask, a sack. Then he gets his iconic hockey mask. And he's got all kinds of weird kills throughout this thing. Like, he's got, like, the, the most random kills ever. And then it kind of like the machete becomes his weapon. He goes to New York, Richard. Like he you're does. not even safe. And then he goes to yeah, space. But I mean, again, like like I was talking about Michael Myers. He was everywhere. With like Jason, it's you know, don't go to Camp Crystal Lake and certain parts of Manhattan and or get one, on a space station. Yeah, and one <laughs> time space. <laughs> but I mean, I don't. Did you ever see Freddy vs. Jason? Um, I saw. I did watch it, and the old honestly, I I'd have to go back. I I vaguely remember how it ended. Gotcha. It wasn't bad. Like the the way they got Freddy and Jason together made sense. Yeah, no, that I agree with. But it's just this whole like mother issue character who just is killing in the name of his mother. He's got some supernaturalness to him. Um, he can't be killed. He dies in each one, but he comes back stronger yeah. and scarier. Um, did they ever explain that? Did they ever I don't explain think so. I, I don't think they ever did explain the the why Jason is what he is. Like, is he a demon? Is he a zombie? Is he like what what actually is he? Because even in the uh the Freddy vs. Jason, Freddy like he's like asleep dreaming, and Freddy gets into his dreams and wakes him up acting like his mother. Uh-huh. So it's not even like he does anything to give him a demon power or anything like that. So, yeah. And that, that's kind of creepy in all these twos. Like you can't understand why they are the way they are. You know, yeah. like I said, Michael Myers is just a person. Jason, you don't know. Freddy is this like demon infused killer. Um, but I mean, Jason is one of those things that he's got so many weird kills. You know, he squashed people in beds, machete, spears, um, anything and everything you can find at a camp. And, as story continues to this day, I think they're rebooting this again at some point in the near future. Um, the uh, the only are thing they? Like, are we gonna get? Yeah. We're gonna get another one. They had the one with the guy from Supernatural, which wasn't bad. It was pretty good. Um, the last the so was was the last one he he was in was the last one Space. No, no, they did a uh, Friday the Thirteenth reboot where it's kind of like a starting from scratch where. It was uh, one of the guys from the Supernatural TV show was on there. Okay, okay. But yeah, they're they're. It sounds like they are rebooting it at some point. I'm not sure where. Uh, but again, it's a character that's you know it's been going on for 30 plus years. And you know if they put out a Friday the 13th on a Friday the 13th, it'll make decent amount of money. And it's a pretty simple story. Yeah. But again, I think it, I, it is a super simple story. It's you yeah. know don't. Uh, uh, what, uh, I, I don't even, you know, like, I always like, what was it? Like, that was the other thing I was always trying to figure out. Like you said, you know, you were saying like, oh, he's motivated by his mother. Like, what was the, what was the deal? Why did he want to kill people so bad? Is it just like, don't fuck up my leg. Pretty much. Well, I mean, cause his story was, he was a Stop kid who fucking at my, you know, in my, at my summer camp because he was a kid who got picked on. He was swimming in the lake and drowned because the counselors were doing drugs, drinking, fucking, like not paying attention to what they should. So he's like, there he's like, no more kids will die the way I've died. Kill all <laughs> fornicating counselors. But yeah, Richard, that is my second round pick. A guy I think you'll see up there with his hockey mask and his machete, Jason. Okay. 
So for my next pick, I'm going to go with a killer who I would say is as well known, but not necessarily. I I personally would put his face on this Mount Rushmore, but I don't know if you'll agree with me, Sean. This is this is a killer who is you know this this dude is from hell. He is from hell, Sean, and he is a he he is a person that revels in nothing but torturous delight. Sean, for my second round pick, I'm gonna go. With a dude that freaked the shit out of me when I was a kid. I'm going to go with Pinhead. Good one. I like that one. So I don't know if you ever heard. So the original ending, they never filmed it because it was going to be too fucking expensive. But the original ending for Freddy vs. Jason was as, you know, the the lake turns into like fire. They get pulled down into hell. Uh Uh-huh. And they're both chained. And as they're like, you know, pulling against the chain trying to get to each other. All of a sudden in the back, you hear somebody talking and you see one of those boxes and you see Pinhead walk out and they're in this like big ass arena of like demons and like evil creatures. And basically Pinhead is there to have these two fight for the entertainment of those stuck in hell. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But again, way too expensive. <laughs> that's true. The, the, I, I, the first one is is I would say the first one's fairly slow in terms of in terms of the way the plot goes. But when you get to the other ones, I feel like it kind of adopts that that classic, you know, 80s horror movie yeah. feel where, you know, crazy psycho evil demon shows up and chains people and fucking rips them inside out. Yeah. And then like, really, you don't really even see him actually do much. He just stands there and just basically like wills things to happen with his brain. And uh, which to me is more menacing. Like if you, if you have those situations where something's going on, some thing is just like watching and like getting physically aroused. Yeah. Uh, like you got chains like in your face, pulling your skin <clears throat> off, and he's like, "I'm fucking rock hard right now." <laughs> You're oh like, my! I God. am too. He's like, "Wait, what? <laughs> Seriously, stick one in my dick right now." <laughs> well, this isn't hell at all. It's hell for you, not for me, Pinhead. Wow, I feel so defeated. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried to watch the first one, and it's one of those things with a lot of these kind of scary movies. Like you see the the bad guy relatively quick into it and i think in the first one you don't see pinhead to like the third act right like he's very uh, much later in the the movie you don't see him god do you even see him hardly at all in the first one i don't think you do it's not really until two that like he has has more of a has more of a role more of a prominent role gotcha and the, uh, i think i think hellraiser one kind of had a bit of a direction that it was going in, but I felt like two is where there was more of a mythos established. Like, Hey, there's this weird puzzle box. And if you fuck with it, then this crazy dude comes out with nails in his face. And then he stands there and chains fly, come out of nowhere and stab you in the face and then rip your skin off while you're still alive. Yeah. And then you yell and he smiles and he's rock hard. And he's like, guess where you're going next? You're like, hopefully the hospital. He's <laughs> like, no, hell, bitch. <laughs> oh, and this is going to happen forever. I'm so hard. And then you're like, me too. And he's like, oh, you fucking ruined it. Again, you fucking pervert. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even right now. <laughs> you ever wonder if he gets performance anxiety? I don't know. I mean, if somebody did, it was like super sake, like sadistic, and maybe that's how he gets back at them. Like he, he gives them like normal, like sexual situations. Yeah, it's like a married he gets, couple. He's like getting ready to, you know, send chains out to stab somebody in the face, and like they miss, and he's like, "I swear, this has never happened to me before." <laughs> it's not you. It's me. <laughs> I just had a lot of pressure. You're like the thirtieth person I've had to do today. I mean, like, yeah, like all these people come and they open the fucking box, and then I show up and wooga wooga wooga. <laughs> but I, I don't know. It's just like it's it's really it's hard. It's hard on me. Do you understand? I thought, I thought they called you Pinhead. What happened? Listen, it's a it's a pin dial dysfunction. They just they're not popping out right now. 
You need a pill or hey, listen, if you need to sit down and take a minute, it's okay. It's no big deal. <laughs> no, just don't look at me. It makes just, it worse. Just stop it. Stop it. I just I I feel I'm feeling really self conscious right now. <laughs> Let me just think of your mother. What? <laughs> Oh, there we go. Nope, that was me. Wait, what? You sick son of a bitch. So yeah, pinhead. I like it. <laughs> all right, Richard, for my third round pick, uh, I, I don't know if I've actually seen all the original, but I've definitely seen the reboot with a Miss Jessica Beal, and I've seen the back, uh, basically it's like the, uh, the prequel they did. Um, it's a guy, Richard, based on a real character, a real person okay. um, from Wisconsin who liked to make shades of people's skins oh. and like to wear their leather as a face. Ed Richard. Gein. Yeah. I am going to go with the chainsaw-wielding leather face. Okay, so... I fe- okay so out of out of the if if you want to talk the about like 80s slasher films I feel like there's 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 a few that initially like jump in your brain you have Halloween Friday the 13th Nightmare on Elm Street Texas Chainsaw Massacre now I will say that I think out of out of that group now I will say like out of that group I felt that Texas, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, was the bloodiest. Yeah, it was the it was very much more dark indie. Of it's very <clears throat> very, it was a lot gorier. Yeah, I mean that felt like it was. I think I don't think that one was a pretty big release too, but that felt oh, like it might know, have like, been. You, that feels like your last house on the left. Hills have eyes from. Uh, oh shit! What's his name? It slipped my mind. Uh. Oh, who who didn't? Last house on the left in that. Um, oh, Wes Craven. Wes Craven, yeah. That that felt very much like early Wes Craven, but it was a bigger release. So it was kind of one of those things I think that got picked up because you know these other movies kind of started getting traction. Like, oh my god, here's this fucked up Texas Chainsaw, and it was one of the first ones too to put based on a true story at the beginning. And yeah. It's very loosely based on a true story. But how many movies do we have now that say based on a true story that people go into like, oh, my, oh God. my God, they're all like that. Yeah, now. they are all like that now. Does does that make it OK? So does that make it creepier for you? Not anymore, because especially with the Internet, you can research it and be like, oh, this is based on a true story. It's like, yeah, I mean, there's a guy named Ed Gein who killed people and ate them and made, you know, Stuff out of people's bodies, which is creepy and scary in its own. Sure. But he wasn't like wielding a chainsaw. It wasn't like a family of these, you know, cannibals. Um, And again, this is kind of a movie, too, that this was a time where you didn't have cell phones. Cars broke down a lot more now than they do. I think back then. Very much so. Towns were a lot more spread out. So like today your car breaks down, like you're going to call somebody. Even yeah. if a cop pulls up, you're like, oh, you I call called. AAA. Exactly. They're on their way. It's like, whoa, you want to go back to my creepy house? Like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'll just, I'll stay here. I'm yeah. fine. I mean, you can hang out. It's still light out. It's like, it'll be <laughs> dark soon. Well, yeah, I'm like six hours. Yeah. Somebody will be here before then. And if not, like, it's fine. Yeah. Batter- the battery still works. I'll just yeah. listen to the radio. <laughs> I'll listen to a podcast. <laughs> What's a podcast? Oh, you son of a bitch. Well, now we have to go to your house so I can show you what a podcast <laughs> is. You have Wi-Fi, right? Uh, sure. We have FaceFi. I don't get it. That's not a funny joke. <laughs> Do you eat people? Yes. <laughs> Wait, are you kidding or are you serious? Hey, I don't care. Let's go. To each their own. <laughs> Whatever. Do, 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 do. Downloads and download. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> sale is a sale. Do, 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 do. But but yeah, it's just it's a very like it's it's kind of the the mindless killer that is a butcher. And it's kind of the thing that people take advantage of. It's like, you know, I'm a guy that can wield a chainsaw and butcher people, but I'm not really doing it probably for evil reasons. I'm doing it because you're cattle. And I think it, to some extent that's even scarier when when a human being can look at other human beings just as cattle. Which I'm guessing like when you think of the true story, like that's probably how Ed Gein was. Like probably. he didn't look at people. As like, oh, you're a human. He's like, hmm, I wonder how you'd taste between two slices of bread with <laughs> mustard and yeah. be my new couch. Oh. Yeah. But so there it is, Richard. My th- Oh, and shoot, when you see the one Jessica Beals in, she's running around in the rain in a white T-shirt with no bra. I've got a huge crush on her, so. 
That was exciting. I was like, seventh <laughs> heaven, when I see you running through the rain with no bra on. <laughs> seventh heaven, Leatherface, please don't kill her until her um, boobies pop out. Oh, and I'm done. Penhead's like, me too. <laughs> All right, Richard, what do you have for your third round pick? All right, so on for my next pick, I'm going to go with a killer that – Kind of brought me back into horror movies for a minute. Uh, I do feel like it kind of went on a little long, the, the series, I mean. But one thing I love about I like I like I like horror films, but another thing I like, Sean, is puzzles and mysteries. So, Sean, for my next pick, I gotta go with Jigsaw. Literally, I was gonna pick that next. Were you? Yes, that's a that's I'm in the same boat. So <clears throat> I've you know, you and I talked like when when I started working at the restaurant, I was really big into horror movies and Saw yes. was one of those that brought me in. And I remember because I remember horror movies being like they're just gore, they're stupid, there's no real like story to them. And you watch that first Saw and you're like, okay, like this is weird, this is game, and you're sitting there and you're like, Okay, it's over. And spoilers, what happens? The dead dude in the middle just stands right up. Yep. And I was halfway paying attention, like, okay, so it's over. All right, credits, let's get this going. And he stands up. I'm like, Did this just turn into a fucking zombie movie? Like, what the fuck's <laughs> going on? And he just turns around, I was like, blah, blah, blah. Do, do you want to play a game? No, like, then he's like, Game oh, over. Yeah. And he slams the fucking door. <laughs> What? And then you're like, what? That he was the fucking dude. Yeah. And they play like the. And I think I saw up to like five or six. There's one where like there's. Oh, the, sh- oh, you, oh, you're saying you saw up to five and six. I yeah, yeah. You were asking how many there were. I think there's like what eight. <clears throat> there's something seven. Like, they, they just came out with one. I think called called Jigsaw. I think. Okay. I think at the point where he ends up dying, like he actually well, he does di- die. Didn't he, I was gonna say, didn't he die in like the. Like the third or fourth one, it was yeah, pretty like early on. The third or fourth one, like this dude was a really good planner. It's like he could, he had enough <laughs> planned out for like ten more movies. I was gonna say like he like he got he got cancer. Like he he must have just like fucking hit the ground running. And for like two years, he's like, I'm gonna plan ten movies worth <laughs> of fucking murdering people. There's a couple that kind of went off the rails. Like they they get to the point where they. They try to be, I don't know if it's political, but they're like, oh, we're blaming the insurance company for this. That's the reason I died. And you're like, all right, let's go. Let's go this route. Right. I like, okay. So I guess my, my, I think the problem that they ran into or why I say the series ran too long is because like you said, they killed him. Like he's dead in like the third or fourth movie. I think the plan was like, okay, let's make four and then we're done. Yeah. And then the studio was like, who who said you could be done? Yeah. It's like, oh, you guys can't be. We'll just hire some more writers and, you know, put out another one next Halloween. And then we'll yeah, and then we'll put out fucking four more. It's like that. It's like those par it's like the paranormal activity movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I just I just read something. Those so those paranormal activity movies, you know how much the that first one cost to make? It was like less than thirty grand, I think. It was fifteen grand. Yeah. Fifteen grand to make that fucking movie and it grossed like almost two hundred million dollars. Yeah. I mean it's like Blair Witch. Blair Witch was super cheap. I mean it's those it's those simple ideas that, that just kinda creep you out that they just can make a bunch of money on. And yeah, like every paranormal activity after that, like just gets worse and worse, I think, from what I've heard. But that first yeah. one just captures everybody's imagination. Well, cause and the thing with paranormal activity, like nothing really like crazy, crazy happens until the last like three minutes. Yeah, that's true. You're like, what like the, the whole, fuck? Yeah, the whole thing is like a build up to the last like three minutes. Yeah, I feel. But I anyway, didn't like that part I'm scared of shit. But that's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jigsaw because you have you have a okay. So like I initially started this off, I like horror films, but I also like puzzles. And this dude came up with like some fucking like almost brain bendy kind of puzzles. Yeah. Well, that's one too. You could sell yourself like you'd be like, oh, well, I'm not an evil bad person, so he would never mess with me. Yeah, yeah. And the and the, the other thing is, I guess maybe to call them puzzles is it it it, it might be a bit of a misnomer because it wasn't really so much that they were puzzles. It was more like, hey, you're gonna have to suffer through some bullshit. But the 
if you do, then you get to be alive. Yeah. How much are you willing to sacrifice to live? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, that was, that was kind of always the general theme of, of the death traps. You're like, Hey, you can get out of this, but you know, you're going to look super fucked up or you're yeah. going to lose a leg or lose an arm. Like if you don't want to lose an arm, then I guess you're going to be dead. And then what's the point? As long as it's not my right arm. Am I right? You need to learn to use both. <laughs> because if you're in that situation, you'd be like, oh, God, not the right arm. <laughs> it's all over for me. Take me now, Jigsaw. <laughs> it's all I have. But see me, I'd be like, oh, I got the left one. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can I'm figure getting, it out. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good with it. I think at you know any point in a storm, if that point fall, you got your left hand. You gotta, you gotta make it work, right? It's either that or a robot arm. Oh yeah, but then you gotta be careful, right? Squeeze, Squeeze hard. It. Yep. See, pop it like a grape. Yeah, that's Feel good no once. <laughs> yep, that's no bueno. And then Pinhead shows up and he's like, that looks so fucking painful. Oh, now I'm rock hard. <laughs> I'm totally into this now. Give Look at my pins. robot arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, not me too, Pop. Oh, you want to go get a milkshake? <laughs> Is there a Pinhead for Pinhead? That's the question. Ah, mm. There's probably a Pin <laughs> woman. <laughs> okay, another cool thing about Jigsaw the the doll on the bike, yeah, always, that's a good. One. I that's always very love iconic, that. yeah. Super super creepy. You got a lot with that. You got the voice. You got the the doll on the thing. You've got the uh, pig mask that they wore to take people. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think it really had a theme song. I think they used the same one in a couple of them, but it kind of went away. Um, it, uh, it seemed like they always played one in the last. Like they played the same kind of music in the last like two minutes of every movie. Like a crescendo up, kind yeah. Of thing. Like the like like oh the big reveal. Oh my god, he's really dead, but it's somebody else. Yeah, what? it was the doctor, which I think it ends up being the doctor. Which after the first one, like I wonder what ever happened to him. You don't find out until you stop watching and look at Wikipedia. Yeah, and then six movies later, and then you're like, no, Wesley, no. <laughs> That's what happens when you lose the love of Princess Buttercup. Yeah. Go on a murderous spree for the character known as Jigsaw. So that's yep. my that's my pick, Jigsaw. I like it. Total steal. That was gonna be my very next pick. Um so Richard, I'm gonna have to move on. So this is a character that you know, when growing up, uh dolls creeped me out, right? I hated dolls. Yeah. Mainly because of this one character. Like everybody always talked like, oh my god, I think my dolls are alive. <laughs> and this is a story all about a kid whose doll was literally alive and trying to kill oh. him. Richard, I'm going to go with it's the child play character Chucky. So it's a it's a serial killer gets put into the body of a a doll, and his one goal in life is he wants to become a real boy. Yep, yep. This is what happens when this is this is this is where you take something classic like Pinocchio and make it horrible. Oh yeah. Good point. Good call. Uh, it, it kind of follows the, the same path as kind of, I said with Freddie, like the first one is like really scary, but then they start to get more and more like uh, humorous. Like there's one where he ends up at, I think it's like military camp and he changes all the fake bullets with real bullets with why they'd be shooting each other with that. I don't know, but they did. Yeah. And ends up yeah. like killing a bunch of people and he's sitting there like laughing um, at some point he gets a hot, the, the one chick becomes his, his like girlfriend shows up in this and she becomes a doll. Yeah. Yeah. What was her name? Lily. I don't remember what her name was. Lily something. But then she ends up getting knocked up as a doll and they have a baby doll, doll. baby. Yeah. I mean, it's I one can't. of those, it does what slasher movies does. Like it jumped the shark, but it kept going for it miles. Did. It totally did. I feel like that's what I think that's kind of the running theme when it comes to these slasher movies. And I think is the, is it just because they're just so cheap to make? I think that's part of it that they're just like, let's just keep making them. Well, yeah, but we killed the killer in the last one. Be like, yeah, I don't know. Bring him back. Do do some sort of hokey fucking devil ritual. And then. I don't know. The doll gets another doll pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's all brand acknowledgement. Like you say, Chucky, like they just came out with, or they're about to come out with a, a movie called the cult of Chucky. 
which is I thought that was out. It might have come out. I I mean I saw okay. a trailer for it, but I haven't seen it. But I mean it's the same thing. It's like it's a doll. You bring the guy who did the voicing and pay him a couple bucks to do the voice for this, and you're done. And like people are like, oh, this is Chucky. Let me check it out. I was like, yeah. oh, that was stupid, but I watched it. So oh look, Cult of Chucky too. I watched so who's, that. Who's really the Who's really the fool? Yeah, all there are really Richard is they're slashing our wallets. Am I right? Uh y- yes, you're right. But I mean, um, there's nothing creepier than a little thing running around with a knife, and that's what you get with my fourth round pick, Chucky. All right, pick number four. I feel like I feel like I've been doing good so far, so I gotta. F- I, I've I've got to be I've got to be careful now. I've got to be strategic. Yeah, this was a I, tough draft. I think we've done pretty well so far through the first four rounds. Because because I see this is where I feel like I don't want to save anything. All right, here we go. No, no. Okay. So for my next for my axe killer, I'm gonna go with. So in in this movie, I think this particular killer only yes. In this movie, this particular killer only killed one person. Hmm. But, and it wasn't even like a crazy, you know, way that the dude died. He hit him, killed him with an axe. Seems pretty mundane for for a scary movie. But I feel like watching this character descend into madness is what made this guy so iconic. Sean, for my next pick, I'm going to go with Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Jack Torrance? Jack Torrance. I couldn't remember. I knew his last name was Torrance. I couldn't remember if they actually used his first name as Jack. But you're right. You're right. Jack Torrance in The so Shining. So would you, would you consider that a slasher film? <sighs> I mean, I'll give it to you in this, but I think that's kind of a borderline. It It, it is. The only reason I... I I mean, it super creeped me out, and I felt like this dude was... Like, I wouldn't want to see this dude dragging an axe down the hallway, giving me that crazy-ass look in his eye. No, I agree. I agree 100% on that. You know, it's like, holy shit, the Joker's coming to kill me. And that's what happened. Do you think Do you think that Tim Burton watched The Shining and was like, that's my Joker? I don't know. Good Because I see that, because, like, I I actually just re-watched The Shining, like, th- three, four days ago. and And I... Like you look at different, just like facial expressions and I'm like, oh my God, that's the fucking Joker. Like that's a Joker face. That's a Joker face. Like you see him give them as yeah. he's, you know. Kind of the same performance in both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get, I mean, you can kind of see it. I mean, if, if that hotel was full, it becomes a slasher film. And he also he like, okay. So like I said, he did, he did kill somebody. He killed the cook. He just comes out from out of fucking nowhere and jams an axe in the dude's in the dude's chest. So he kill he does kill somebody. Tried to kill his wife and kid. Yeah, and then you know like died was, in died like in I, a hedge maze. Like I was saying, if that hotel was full, though, he's going to be going room to room killing a bunch of people, and it does become a slasher film for sure. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if that fucking, if that creepy ass old lady in room 234 killed somebody, I would have picked her. <laughs> Cause to me, that was the fucking scariest part of that whole fucking yeah. movie. I mean, like Jack Nicholson's creepy. Sure. But like old naked laughing old lady. Yeah. Zombie coming lady. At me. Uh, like that's straight. That's straight out of my fucking nightmares. I don't know about you. <laughs> It's like my wedding night, am I right? <laughs> oh, you can sleep at my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richard. So for my fifth round pick, this is kind of an unknown movie. Um, I remember watching it and just like loving the concept. It's the movie called Behind the Mask. And it's a documentary, a documentary of the slasher up and comer Leslie Vernon. Have you ever seen this at all? I I haven't. Uh, so it's a documentary that these like college kids are following this Leslie Vernon around, and he's he's showing like all the cliches of what a slasher does. So, like he talks about like oh well, you have to have really really good cardio because mm-hmm. whenever you're chasing people you have to act like you're not running and then you have to hurry up and run somewhere then act like you're not breathing heavy. And so like they see a scene where he's like messing with these campers and he's doing that thing to him and kills them. 
And following the whole thing of this, you learn that he's brought these documentarians on for a specific reason. Uh, oh. But it's just a real it's, – it's an older flick too. I can't remember when it's from. 2006. So it's a bit older. Okay. But – you kind of see like this would be like if if uh, Jason or Michael Myers if they were just real normal everyday people that this was their hobby this was their thing and somebody like interviewed like okay well how do you do these things and you get to see that behind the scenes the behind the mask and you get to see all the stuff from the the killer's point of view uh, Robert England I think makes a, a cameo in it a um, bunch of other crazy stuff happens in it but yeah my fifth round pick if you haven't seen it I won't try to spoil it too much but it's behind the mask Leslie Vernon. Okay. Sounds cool. I actually might watch it. I will you know what? Not actually. I will I will definitely I will definitely watch it. It's a good within, Halloween one. Within the next within the next week or two. All right, Sean. It's time it's time for me to bring out the big guns. What are we on? We on four or five? Uh, this is five? your fifth round pick. This is five. All right. Yep. It's time to bring out the big guns. Sean, okay, so so you were kind of you were kind of sketchy about my last pick. But I don't think you can be at all sketchy about my next one, Sean. This is a this is a killer who has had multiple people as this as this killer, and also just 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 a second ago you were talking about the tropes of horror movies, Sean. I'm going with Ghostface. Stole a second one from me. That was my next pick. I thought about taking him with my fifth round pick. I thought about taking him <clears> for the last one, and I was like, "No, I'll, I'll squeeze, I'll squeeze, I'll squeeze Jack Torrance in." I, I mean, you talk about horror and slasher, like the like you said, the tropes. Ghostface has it all. He's got a theme song. He's got not just that. Like he takes the tropes and then fucks uses them. with, and then uses the tropes. You know, I I think that people. I think now, today, I think that they don't give Scream enough credit. Oh, the I Scream, agree. the the first, the first two or th- you know, the first two Scream movies. I feel like they don't give them enough credit because you got to remember, like these these came out in like what ninety, like late, Six, like mid late nineties, ninety six, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, so by then, horror movies as a genre. I think was was you know kind of limping along. It was nowhere near what it was in the eighties. People saw it as super campy, you know, like oh, like I don't want to go watch a fucking horror movie. That's you know, that's something dorks and dweebs do. Mm. And I'm like, I that's, love them. That's something I get on VHS when I want to see boobies. Yeah, right. Okay, so. Wes Craven, uh, again, a director that everybody felt had kind of like shot his creative wad, as it were. Mm-hmm. He shows up with this fucking horror movie that makes a pointed effort to poke fun at itself. And then by doing that, it ends up revitalizing the entire, I feel, the entire oh, genre. Yeah. I mean, that's how you get like your Eli Roths and stuff like that from the early 2000s. For oh, sure. exactly. At least give because, them the opportunity. Because Scream was a movie that took all the other movies that came before it and was super blatant in saying, hey, you see these horror movies? Like, we're going to deliber- we're go- going to deliberately work against them mm-hmm. or deliberately you know we're going to call them on their bullshit and then meanwhile also have a crazy killer wearing a ghost mask that comes around and stabs people in the face and that mask becomes iconic that is the, it does. like you see that mask you know scream yep yeah you do you don't even like i actually had to look up the name of like I'm like, what do you? What would you call that? The Scream Killer? What do you? I oh, actually had I to look up face. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, I, I think they mentioned it, was... it in the show in the movie. Oh, I thought I could be wrong. Yeah, I actually had to look it up that it was Ghostface, or look up that there was a name because because like you said, it's just you know you see the mask and you're like, oh, that's Scream, the mask from Scream. Yep. And then the call, like you want, or what's your favorite scary movie? Yeah, you know, you have that stuff that's like you know iconic. Yeah, it's the line that they have, and a lot of the people we talked about, like Mike Myers, Jason, Leatherface. uh, I guess Ghostface does it, but you know, those are a lot of guys that don't have a voice. They're just 
these mindless killers, but you know, yeah. these ones like, and then they talk on the phone. Yeah. Oh, and that's all. Oh, and like at that t- point in time too, like how many people were scared to answer your phone when you're home alone late at night? Like you right? had the, the one where it's like the call is coming from inside the house. Yeah. Yeah. You had the babysitter, but not, and, and that was the other thing is like during the phone call, he's fucking again, they're poking fun yeah. at the, no, yeah, at, yeah, the yeah. at themselves. Yep. They're like, here, here's horror movie trivia. You ready? Yeah. I'm going to stab you in the face. The 13th. Wrong. Yeah. Now I'm going to kill your boyfriend. And also, that was the other. Okay. So, again, 1996, Drew Barrymore is like the super smoking hot fucking like it girl. And she, in the first five minutes of the movie, she's dead and swinging yep. from a fucking tree. Uh, Scream 2, Sarah, Sarah Michelle Geller's in there, and she yes. has a very small role and gets killed. Yes. You're so you like, take oh, these, like, this is our new heroine. It's like, nope, Buffy's dead. Yeah. Stab, stab, stab. Yeah, thrown through a glass window. Oh, so good. So, yeah, there's there's my pick, Sean. Pick number five. So if, doing you keep, ghost face. if you're keeping track, Richard, that's the second one you've stolen from me. Um, have you stolen? I don't know if you've I'm, stolen any. You, you from stole me. them like as I was going to pick them next, too, yeah, which it hasn't yeah. happened in a bit. Um, all right. So for my sixth round pick, Richard, this is uh, this is kind of a very early slasher. Uh, happened in the seventies. Uh, we kind of joked about it a little bit earlier, but this is a guy who was obsessed with his mother, ran a hotel, and you know. Was a dirty boy. Oh my god, you just did it to me. Richard, for my sixth round pick, I want to go with Norman Bates. Oh, okay. So I I actually, like I said, I was going to pick this next. And honestly, I thought you were going to give me crap. Be like, well, how many people does he kill in that movie? Because really, does he kill? He doesn't kill that many, I guess, does he? Uh, I think two. Two tops. He kills. Well, uh, I he, he kills. Um, he kills the girl in the first, you know, in the first bit. And then I think he like one of the police officers that comes to investigate. I think he that's kills right. one of them. And I think that's it. Uh, but I it's mean, been it, it's been forever since I've yeah. seen the old one. So I'm trying to think more. I, I've seen more recently, not more recently, but between the old one and the uh, the remake they did in. Uh, like the late '90s, but the remake with, was a uh, shot for shot remake, wasn't it? Yeah, it pretty much was. I mean, the one with uh Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it I mean, pretty much was. This checks off a lot of boxes: iconic weapon, iconic outfit, iconic scene, iconic music. Yeah, it fits all those things. And like, this is one of those that you know, if you're in a hotel again by yourself and you're in the shower, it's it's kind of creepy. Yeah. And also classics. It, it was a it was a classic. It was a movie where you got the twist at the end. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Like, I His thought mom's Norm- dead. Yeah, the mom's dead. Be like, oh my <laughs> god, he's a cross dressing fucking crazy yeah. dude. Well, it's interesting too. Like each of the ones after that, like he becomes less and less of the bad guy. I think like in Psycho Five or Six. I really didn't watch any of the other ones. I only know this via wiki because I kind of like went down a wiki hole on on Psycho. Okay. And like in episode four or five, I think somebody comes back that he had killed or something had happened. And they try to frame him and make him think he's going crazy again. And I think like at the end of that, his mom starts talking to him again. So somebody trying to fuck with him end up making him crazy again. Okay. Okay. Norman. She's a horn, Norman. <laughs> so my sixth round pick, Richard, is Norman Bates. All right. All right. All right, Sean. For my next pick, I'm going to go with a character that I think, I'm trying to think how many movies there were of this. I think there might have been only two. But this this is a this is a dude that kills people, is super supernatural. And has a very iconic scene. And Sean, as soon as I say the word, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. This scene involves bees. Mm. Sean, for my sixth pick, I'm going with Candyman. And I, I saw this was, like came up in all my research. I have never actually seen Candyman. You've never seen Candyman? Nope. Oh, my God. It's like it's. Um, I guess the best way to describe it is uh, 
think like think I mean basically like think like Bloody Mary. Okay. You know, if if they made a movie based on Bloody Mary, but it's a guy and like I said, at one point he's hold the like I said the most iconic scene in this is he he's holding this girl and the girl's looking at him and then he opens his mouth and there's fu- his mouth's full of bees oh. and there's bees flying everywhere like out of his fucking mouth and like initially you're thinking like oh that's kind of creepy and then you're just going like how does that dude have the self control to have a mouth full of fucking bees <laughs> and not swallow cuz i'm saying Sean like they're fucking bees yeah like it's not like you know this this movie came out in early 90s yeah, like the bees 92. aren't going to be happy to be in your mouth. They're going to be stinging. Yeah, this movie came out in 92. So we're not talking like, oh, the world of fucking computer generated bees in the mouth. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, those he actually had bees. bees in his mouth. I'm, th- those are bees, Sean. Oh, geez. Dude has bees in his mouth. Get peed on I'm the looking phone. at the picture right now. That dude has bees in his fucking mouth. That's, that's Those are bees. That's one of those things you only get one take of. Yep. Because after that, you're like, nope, nope. It's more like no, no, I no, I no, I no, I no, I no. I feel like how this man didn't receive an Academy Award. Be like, <laughs> you filled your mouth full of bees. Like you are a genuine fucking artist of your craft. He's probably never done a movie again, has he? Of no. Um. God, what else was he in? Like Christopher yeah. Walken, crazy. <laughs> No, I'm trying to think of I, I can't think of the dude's name. He's been in other movies. Oh, he was in uh he was in The Rock with uh Nicholas with Nick Cage and uh um Sean Connery. Uh he was um so so the so the bad guys had those two sergeants or those two kind of like lieutenants that were like fucking crazy and they're like, Yeah, we'll nuke you know, we'll send fire rockets at San Francisco. We don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I've never seen The Rock either. God damn it. Oh. I'm a I'm kid of the to... early 2000s, not the early 90s and mid 90s. Well, I'm trying to think of other uh, other movies this guy has been in. And now, and see, and now you got to make me fucking figure it out. So he was in. Do, do, do. I'm trying to think of. If there's something here you've seen, uh, he was Zoom in the Flash, mm. the TV show. Um, ooh, he was the voice of Darkseid. God damn, this dude has had a long and storied career. But anyway, dude had bees in his mouth. So the fact that he didn't get an Academy Award for that, I think, is a fucking tragedy in film. Like every time I look at that scene, I'm like, oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Those are bees in his fucking mouth. How the hell he pulled that off? I have no idea. But anyway, that's my pick, Sean. It's like I said, you know, the 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 basis of the movie is like think of what if the uh what if Bloody Mary was a thing that jumped out of the mirror and you know had bees flying out of its mouth. Gotcha. I'll have to check that out. That, that'd probably be a good, like, fall Halloween scary movie. It definitely it's, would. It's one you don't hear too many people talk about. Like, everybody's heard of it, but I'm not sure how many people have seen it. Yeah, that's true. All right, Richard, for my seventh round, a money shot pick. We've mentioned this character already, and we talked about, like, you know, iconic twists. You know, this person has kills. person has a, a name, a recognition. Richard, for my seventh round pick, I want to go back to Camp Crystal Lake, but I want to go with Jason's mother. That is so not. Are you are you on six? Are is no, this, this is my money seven, shot? Yes, yeah, my money shot. This pick. is your money shot yep. pick. That is so not what I would have thought you were going to pick. Yep. So this is a. I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but it's a character who you know, as you're watching this, and especially if you're at the point, like let's say you've you've heard of Jason. Yeah, which is this the boat I was in. I've heard of Jason. I didn't sure. realize what the first one had happened. Right. So right, I right, go right. back and I'm watching this and I'm expecting all these kills to come from a hockey wielding crazy madman. Right. And what do you get at the very end, Richard? No, you get Jason's mother. Yeah. You get this mad woman, this mother bear 
pissed because these people are fucking in their camp, not yeah. taking care of kids, and going around and killing every single one of them that's doing the dirty, dirty inside the camp instead of watching the kids. Kids weren't even there yet. She was already prepping. I know. Like, how fucked up is that, that you're, like, that fucking obsessed with, like, teenagers fucking in the woods? And it makes you wonder, like, was it that big a fucking epidemic? Yeah, like, of kids teens, were dying all like, the time. Yeah, uh, was it that big a fucking epidemic of kids fucking in the woods that you're just like, you know what? Enough of this. <laughs> I'm going to go stab him in the face. Well, it's like the Freddy vs. Jason does a great scene where they have uh, um, Jason back in the camp when all that happened. And uh-huh. you see, like, it's just like big orgy like all the camp counselors are fucking <laughs> one of them ends up turning into freddy and he's like making out with some chick he's like oh, 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 oh. it's like jason's dry he's like i don't give a fuck oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but it's you know it's it's one of those realistic um like you could i mean you could see somebody doing this you could see somebody going crazy killing people to camp right like that yes. there's not really anything supernatural about her the very Unfortunately, end yes yeah. In the very end, you see like Jason jump out and grab the person, but it's kind of like, did it happen? Did it not happen? You don't know. But I think it's kind of an iconic moment, a very iconic movie, and a very iconic character that a lot of people don't talk about because it's only one movie. But my money shot pick, Richard, is going to go to Jason's mother. I, I, you know what? Like, I think that is the most indie seventh round pick I've had, yeah. I've seen you do. Like, for any draft. I it has to be say. up there, yeah. It's a, it's very unknown. Like I could see nobody picking this for it, but it's one of those like, yeah, yeah. You, sh- you should have her walk in the red carpet of the uh, All Star team. Uh, well, and also like, yeah, I think like that movie is what started all the other ones. Yep, exactly. So, and you had Kevin Bacon, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, <laughs> and now it's all connected. <laughs> We did it. We did it. IMDb. <laughs> all right, Sean. For my money, Sean pick. I. Like I said, I am super surprised you didn't pick this, so I guess I guess it, it falls to me. It falls to me to fill this gap, Sean. Seventh round pick, I'm going with Crazy Clown. Oh, I'm going Pennywise? with Pennywise. See, I thought about it, but again, that kind of feels like the Jack Torrance is like, is he really a slasher? I mean, I had trouble with that because it feels more he supernatural. Eats people. Yeah, but it feels more supernatural. It's kind of like. Picking Cujo. Well, yeah, but like I said, I mean, like Candyman's kind of the same thing. Yeah, to an extent, I guess. Um, I, like, I think if you pick somebody like the Wishmaster or the Leprechaun, I would yeah. have been okay with it. The, see, I had like the Leprechaun in my mind, but the same thing. It's like that just doesn't I, – I don't know if they're classified as slashers. I, they may be. I'm not 100% sure, but that's just kind of the gist I got with like Pennywise. Is it really doesn't fall into the slasher genre. I mean, for me, I think that like, and th- and maybe this is just because of my age, but I like for me, like any movie that kind of I watched during that time in my life. So like, you know, mid, late eighties, early nineties, like any movie that any kind of, you know, scary horror movie that kind of fell in there in my head falls into that slasher category. Yeah. Especially one where there's like a super high body count, I could see that. And in it, you get you get a fairly high body count. I guess the way I see it is more like they're, they're not getting. I guess the, the you know with like Pennywise and Candyman, maybe like they're getting eaten. Um, I don't know. I it, I don't really have a good answer for it. It just feels it feels kind of like a when you have that guy you draft for the baseball team, but he's also a football player. So he's kind of in both camps. And so he's like, the Bo, So Pennywise is the Bo Jackson of. Uh, I'd probably say more like Deion slashers. Sanders. Like okay. Deion Sanders wouldn't be a Hall of Famer in, you know, either one, but he could probably he can play in both if that okay. makes sense. Okay. But I like it. I mean, I'll I'll allow it. So yeah, a crazy clown that eats people, scares the shit out of me. Scares the shit out of everybody. Have you seen the new one yet? I have. What'd you think? Hmm. I liked it more than I thought I was going to because I was I was pretty hell bent on saying like, you know, fuck Skarsgård, Tim yeah. Curry is my petty wise curry for life, curry for life. <laughs> so I liked it more than I thought I was going to. But I mean, it had its faults. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't great, but it was decent. 
it was good enough for them to make another one, which is what they're doing. Uh, and I do like the way I do like the way they structured the story. Yeah, I thought I thought that was uh huh. Instead of bouncing back and forth, doing it as like two separate films, I thought that was I thought that was smart. And I think in the the next one, you're going to see a little bit more bouncing because they brought the kids back. So yeah, well, and and I think that that kind of makes sense because I feel like that will help add context to. The adult stuff. Yeah, I agree. I think you're going to see a lot of stuff like they said. They're going to like forget happen. Yeah. And so they're going to get those memories back. So there's going to be more probably stuff from the book, I bet, which would be pretty cool. All right, Richard, what would you have for some of your and buts? Um, so for and buts, you took you took a lot of my and buts. Um, I'll tell you what. Why? One question I want to ask of you where was Jaws? I feel like Jaws is, is kind of a is kind of a mass killer. Um, I feel like Slasher is more humanoid. I think is why I didn't take take Jaws. Okay. I figure I figure that's what you'd say. I was just curious because um, I feel else? you have to be careful because if you pick Jaws, then you're getting more into like the horror film draft. Yeah, and so I'm looking more for the specific slasher type type character. Um, I had the uh, I couldn't think of the dude's name, but the killer from. Uh, the I don't know what you did last summer. Oh, uh, I called him Hookhand. He was on my and butt. Okay, okay. Um, Chucky was on mine. Um, I did have the Leprechaun on there, but he was like at the very bottom. Mm. Like, oh, if I can't think of anything else, like, yeah, let's go with that. And like all the other ones, uh, like like the other ones are just. Ones that I I don't it, it would take a minute to describe like Doctor Giggles I don't know if you saw Doctor Giggles no yeah it was it was he was like a he was like a crazy weird doctor that you know killed people I mean I don't know a lot of lesser like you know lesser known kind of things because like I said this list was hard it was hard oh, to come yeah, up yeah. with this one. I mean, you definitely like, I think you get the monument type people like Freddie, Michael, Jason, Pinhead, Leatherhead, like those jumped out right away. But when you start getting into, because my, my uh, approach to these, is I try to get 14 picks in case mm-hmm. you pick all of the ones I have. Right. And it took a little work to get to past 10. Um, for my ambuts, I had, uh, I had from the movie Hatchet, the, the bad guy from that. Okay. Um, okay. Very much a, a play on um, Jason, really. Um, there's a movie called Final Girls, which is more of a comedy. Okay. Uh, but there's like a Jason type character in that. And then I think the redneck killer from Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh was yeah, really that would be too. bad. Or like the or like the the crazy weird family from Wrong Turn. I'll oh, tell you, I'll yeah, tell you another right. pick that would have been good that just popped in my head is the Firefly family. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's I'd be kind of slashers. I would say yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good call. It was funny. I just missed that because I just saw the uh, the scene where uh, the clown uh, takes the uh, ride from the old woman. Like, I'm gonna uh, need to confiscate this car for some clown <laughs> business. <laughs> what do you mean clown business? Did I stutter, bitch? <laughs> what do you mean you like clowns? Aren't we fucking funny? <laughs> Don't we make you fucking laugh? Oh, uh, I love that movie. All right, well, let me run through some picks. So for my first round pick, I had Freddy Krueger. Second round pick, Jason. Third round pick, Leatherhead. Fourth round pick, Chucky. Fifth round pick, Leslie Vernon from Behind the Mask. Sixth round pick, Norman Bates. And seventh round, money shot pick, Jason's mother. So Richard, for his first round pick, had Michael Myers. Second round pick, Pinhead. Third round pick, Jigsaw. Fourth round pick, Jack Torrance. Fifth round pick, Ghostface. Sixth round pick, Candyman. And seventh round, money shot pick, Pennywise. Good stuff. Good, good draft overall. I say those two are kind of questionable, but um, good draft overall. I think if you would have picked the Firefly Flame and the Wrong Turn Family, I think you would have probably been a lot closer in this draft. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the Firefly one, I think I thought of it like a couple days ago. And I just, neg- I was, I think I was like at work or something like that. And I just neglected to write it down. Yeah. They feel a little too real for Slasher, I think. Is kind of why they probably kind of skipped my mind because mm. Slasher is kind of a mix between slightly supernatural but still very grounded, I guess. Yeah. But 
Um, I guess as we're closing the slasher draft, Richard, and uh, we're closing up Halloween scary season, uh, what are your Richard's closing thoughts? Uh, don't fall asleep on Elm Street. Don't fuck on Chris and when you go to Crystal Lake. And don't look in a mirror and say Cam D man. All right. Well, let me do a little bit of housekeeping before Richard says those three words in the mirror. Visit our nope, website. Nope. We're at languageofbrowance.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languageofbro and email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbrowance.com. And we're getting very, very close to being in Chicago to do a live show for the 2018 Chicago Podcast Festival. We'll be at the Beat Kitchen on November 27th, so get your tickets now. They're 12 bucks a piece. Richard and I will be there. If you're going to show up, let us know. We'd love to hang out with you afterwards, chit-chat, talk, and we'll even have some bumper stickers and whatnot. So uh, information's in the show notes, and if you need it otherwise, you can tweet us or email us. Yeah, you can co- Yeah, you can actually watch this shit show and how it then watch it slowly devolve <laughs> into madness right before your very eyes. Uh, and you can always like us on Facebook as well. And make sure you recruit some of your friends for the LOB Army by getting someone you know to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And when you do that, make sure you th- throw up ratings and reviews because they're super helpful in terms of keeping us like relevant in, in searches on iTunes and all that good, happy stuff. Plus, we just like to read them. And we're part of the Slasher Podcast Network, the Pod Bros Network. Uh, the network where you don't know who the real killer is. <laughs> and uh, in the show notes, we also we have a brand new Amazon link. So if you want to try and help us out, all you got to do is click the link, do your normal shopping. No extra cost to you, and we just get a little bit of kickback for it. So we'd really appreciate uh, you using our Amazon link. All right. Well, is there anything else before I close her out? Nope. Nope. Arr- nope. All right. Well, that's all the bros we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we... Do, 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 Eat the beaver. Stop it. Hey, Richard. Great. No, now I gotta look under my desk. I gotta look behind me. Hey, what's... Richard! The callers and the podcasters in your house! John's in my house? Yay! <laughs>